We are back here for episode number three of the Oklahoma City Thunder rebuilding series. Now, this is a realistic series, and you guys have been crushing it on this series so far. So, if you guys missed episode number two, we actually added in a shooter to this squad. Check it out. I'll put a link to it in the description below. And the entire series playlist is in the description below check out the entire series you guys have been killing it and showing so much love on the series so obviously guys you guys know that this episode is our scouting video where we're gonna be going through some of the top prospects and the 2020 NBA draft and getting ready for next episode which is gonna be the offseason so if you guys want to see episode number four make sure you go ahead and smash that like button let's get a hundred and seventy likes for episode number four which is gonna be the draft free agency the entire offseason you guys have gotten almost 200 likes in the first hour and a half of episode number two. So I know that you guys can go ahead and you guys can do it. So obviously, guys, we're going to be making a quick little trade and then we're going to start scouting because you guys gave me a lot of information of what we should be doing in this episode and as far as this team so so let's give a brief little recap first off we've been simming some and oh yeah shay's out he tore his mcl uh yeah we're down really bad right now man shay was going crazy I, I do believe that whenever he was playing he was sixth in the entire league horford is taking away shots pokeshevsky you guys told me that he's a beast man he is a monster he is a beast 12 points six boards four assists he's averaging more assists than shay <laughs> that's so crazy to me and he's actually doing all right overall he's actually in the race for rookie of the year he's like top three or something like that and then leangelo ball he's up to a 70 he's been getting a lot of playing time because we've been having a lot of injuries but he's averaging 11 points and he's shooting 33 percent from the three regardless guys this team is down bad right now like looking at this team guys let me go through some of the guys that have been injured on this team first off I'm trading with George Hill in this video, which is the only trade that we're going to be making. But we've seen injuries from Ludor. Shea just tore his MCO, and I'm going to keep him out for the entire season. I mean, bringing him back early makes no sense for us. Jello also got injured as well. Uh, I, I think he sprained something. And then Theo, he broke his right leg. He broke his right leg, and now he's currently back. So we've dealt with a lot of injuries, which is why we are currently the worst team in the entire NBA. But guys, like I said before, I do want to make a trade, and I want to trade away George Hill. He's been decent. He's basically on a one-year team with a team option. I'm looking to trade him to a contending team because I feel like at this point, that's what he would really want to like actually be on. And I mean, looking at it, let's see if we find a team that, that, that actually makes sense for him. So it looks like we just made a official trade and it went by really fast if you guys did not see that. Uh, let me go ahead and let me find it again. We traded George Hill. TJ Leaf and a second round pick in return for Avery Bradley, Mo Harkless and a second round pick because Avery Bradley has been awful. He's been awful <laughs> for the Miami Heat, but we are just going to go ahead and release him because he's on a one year deal. And I'll also go ahead and Mo Harkless, I'm going to set you free as well, bro. We don't need any of these guys on this team, and I'm honestly going to just let the young guys run. We really are not focusing on winning at all. At this point, it really is just player development, and it kind of sucks because Shea had to get injured, and that's possibly the worst thing. So Shea is back, but I'm going to deactivate him for the rest of the entire season uh, because I, there's just really no point in us bringing him back and risking him getting injured again. I would much rather him just sit out for the rest of this year. There's five weeks of basketball left, and we are the worst team in the league. At this point, bringing back Shea to us is honestly kind of counterproductive and let's start scouting some players because like i said before we are projected to have the number one overall pick the mock drafts have us taking cade cade everyone has us taking cade and i hope that the lottery looks out and they actually allow us to take cade now you guys have been telling me about a lot of prospects but let's start off with cade cunningham obviously big point guard six i think he's like six eight, yeah six eight 220 pound point guard Coming out of Oklahoma State, the number one prospect in the entire draft, a 79 overall, according to our scouts. They're saying that, and I'm going to ignore his player comps because Chris Paul, they're saying that his ceiling is literally a all NBA player. At worst, he's just a starter. If property utilized, can help out nicely right away. He's a good athlete with hops. He's one of those guys who just seems like a basketball player. Don't know what that means, but sure. Can take guys off the dribble, has a little shake to his game i are and he also has no weaknesses and he has no medical concerns either it looks like at osu he averaged 25 10 assists two steals and he shot 
45% from the field and 38 from the three. And his free throw could be a little bit better, but I mean, those are things that we can work on. But I like having him next to Shea. If you guys didn't know, we are one of the worst teams when it comes to like even passing. I mean, if if look at this, we have one of the, we are the worst team offensively. We are we are also the worst team defensively. And looking at everything else, offensive rebounds, we are still one of the worst teams in total rebounding. And assist wise, we are the worst team passing. So yeah, looking at somebody like Cade could definitely help out this team. B plus three point scoring, A minus playmaking, B minus perimeter defense. Rebounding is low, but like once again, he's a six, eight point guard. Like we can work with that and a decent IQ as well. Getting Cade, of course, is our number one if we have a chance at getting him. Next up on this list, Evan Mobley. A lot of guys said, look at Mobley and I can't agree more. Like I like Evan Mobley. He's obviously coming out of USC. He can space the floor the way that we want to. But I think that the main priority for us is to find a guard next to Shea. That's also what Sam Presti is trying to do in real life as well. However, I will say that if we fall to like pick number five or six or like pick four and literally all of our other guys are gone, Evan Mobley's at the top of the list because He's going to be a 78 overall, all NBA player. He can dribble the ball. He can shoot. He's a seven footer. He can rebound. And obviously, I don't want to stick with Al Horford. But as far as his strengths, he's good in the low post. He shows promise as a shot blocker, fundamentally sound as a post defender. His weaknesses is that you can't rely on steals, which honestly means nothing for a center. But 20 points, 12 boards, 3.3 blocks, 36% from the three is what is. I like that. He has a lot of good attributes as well. So we'll definitely be looking at, at getting Evan Mobley. That's a definite possibility. Next up, as far as who goes, is Brandon Boston. Yo, BJ Boston is cold, man. I saw a lot of him at Sierra Canyon. All NBA, starter at worst. Knows how to distribute the ball to his teammates regularly. I like that. I like the passing. I need passing on this team because we do not move the ball enough and i really want somebody who can help us move the ball so we'll definitely be taking a look at brandon boston depending on what draft pick we actually get i think this guy can create his own shot at the next level good dunker and a really good finisher overall his weaknesses is that is that the steals and he has a really really slight frame and he's a below average defender i mean we got enough defense on this team i'm not really worried about that yeah these weaknesses for me are not the biggest concern but i mean he, he's a good scorer 28 points per game five assists and he shot 44% from the three, which I like. And he shows some really good potential and upside. Next up is Jalen Green, who to me is the second best prospect in the entire draft. All NBA starter at worst. His body control is solid. Makes adjustments on the fly. He's reliable scoring option whenever he's posted up. Defenders bounce off him and he throws down with authority. That means that he catches bodies. He's really fragile. Not good at getting steals, poor defensive anticipation. So he's not the best defender either. And I mean, he has A minus three point scoring, B playmaking. All these guys can help us out. So let me know what you guys want in the comments section below. I saw a lot in the last video. You, you guys, a lot of you guys are kind of on the same way wire as me. Next up is Jalen Suggs. He's playing that Gonzaga. This guy is also a monster as well, a really good playmaker, but he does have lower potential. That's the only issue now. We can't send him to untapped potential camp, but maybe he does hit. I mean, this could be a really quality point guard that we want. He's really crafty, finishing around the rim, rarely gets blocked, nice shooting form. And I mean, overall, he's a quality player who can play make and defend. Not the best shooter though. I mean, it really depends on where, on where we land. And of course, Jonathan Kaminga, Defensive specialist. I mean, you guys already know. All-star. Mid-range is nice. Are they going to question his shot? He can't shoot. That's what I, I've known from like seeing him. But overall, there are a lot of good prospects in this draft. And I mean, if you guys look at my draft board, it, it's literally Cade. It's Jalen. It's Evan Mobley. It's, it's Brandon Boston. It's Jalen Suggs. It's Kaminga. It's Caleb Love. Caleb Love is an interesting player because we have a lot of draft picks in this year's draft. I mean, we have like three. I think we have Golden States if they do not have a lottery pick. We have, we have Miami's and of course we have ours. He should have good success at the NBA level as he matures and he can contribute right away for any team. That type of stuff I like seeing. He can shoot, he can play make, his defense is below average, but he has a lot of the things that we look for in a prospect, guys. But overall, guys, let me know what you guys want to see from us in the comment section below. One more thing that we are going to be looking at is the upcoming free agents because I do not think that the Thunder are trying to tank. I think that if they can get a free agent, they will. 
It's just that most of them are not coming here. I might look at bringing in guys like Mike Conley to come off of the bench. I mean, I do want veterans on this team and guys that can help this team win games. We're not trying to lose on purpose. I think that positions that we need to work on, I mean, obviously we can play Pokushevsky at small forward and Darius Baisley. We can figure out that, but I do want to add some more guys. So if you guys want me to target any player, let me know in the comment section below. We have to be able to justify this in a realistic sense. I mean, maybe Rudy Gobert. Rudy Gobert is a guy that could potentially be there if the Jazz do not want to pay him. It looks like he wants to stay there, so there's a good chance that he might just end up back on this team. However, Drummond, we made a lot of jokes about Drummond. However, I feel like Drummond could help this team out. As far as rebounding goes, he's he's probably the best rebounder in the entire NBA. And I mean, we definitely will look at getting him, of course, on a shorter term deal. But if no one else picks him up and he does not go back to like Cleveland, we could explore a short term deal with Andre Drummond. I think that in the next episode, we're going to be making a lot of moves. There are a lot of moves, but all of them make sense for this series. The Thunder are not intentionally tanking. It's just happening. I'm sure that Sam Percy wants to win, but it looks like they got us taking Cade cutting him. We also have the Warriors draft pick is down here. The 18th pick to possibly get Caleb Love. It depends on where these draft picks fall, because if we miss out on getting a point guard early on, getting Caleb Love at 18 would probably be the best thing for us. But at the end of the day, guys, let me know what you guys want to see. This was a really short episode. We literally covered making a quick little trade, how down bad this team is with all of the injuries. Shea is Shea is, Shea is kind of regressed as well, but literally Shea is done for this season. We're just saying that he's rehabbing because we're not going to bring him back for these last few games and risk him getting injured again is, is kind of counterproductive. And plus, Theo is thriving. Jello is getting ticked now. All these guys are being able to showcase what they got as well, guys. But other than that, guys, make sure you go ahead and drop a like on it. Go ahead and subscribe. The next episode is going to be the offseason, free agency, the draft. Hopefully, we are bringing in Cade Cunningham or somebody who can help this team win games. Make sure to go ahead and and literally spam down lottery luck in the comment section below. And I'll see y'all in the next one. I'm out, guys. Peace.